Hi! Now, as you can see, I'm adorning these amazing glasses, sunglasses. The sun shining out there whilst I'm inside here, which is quite funny because people have a thing about people wearing glasses on the inside. But whatever. I'm going to do a Casey Neistat and wear these glasses so you don't see where my eyes are moving because I have a tendency to always look that side when the camera is on this side. Even when I flip it around, it still persists. There's something about my eyes that I'm always drawn to the opposite side of the camera. So, even though I have real eyes underneath here... <laughs> cool. Alright. So, today's vlog. I want to talk about the fallout from... Ebro's trolling, lying comment about Drake over the last couple of days and what it says about the whole scene at large. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's great because it's just absolutely stupid and really nonsensical and a bit petty, but I'll fill you in. So, the other day at OVO Fest that happened in Toronto that Drake puts on yearly, Supposedly, Ebro from Hot 97 had a private conversation with Drake where he detailed that he doesn't think much of Joe Budden. He threw him a little uh, shot in a song just to give him a bit of uh, just to give him a bit of a look, and that he thinks the reason why he hasn't put out the DMs is because Drake is insinuating that Joe Budden has some sort of problem with drugs. Hence the um, outburst and the attack on Drake which to some people seemed a bit um, unwarranted and it came out the blue obviously when Joe Biden explained the reason behind it there was there was some sort of substance to it but for, for the average person walking across the street or walking on the street which Joe Biden doesn't really pay much mind to because he's all about the people that are in the culture but to everyone outside of the culture that's just a fan they were like what the fuck's going on Drake is saying the reason why he doesn't want to part of the DMs is because Drake's insinuating that Joe Biden has a drug problem, hence the outburst. Cool, whatever. No one cares about that shit. The more permanent news and the one that got everyone talking and got everyone in a frenzy and probably the reason why I'm making this stupid video is that supposedly Eminem is planning an attack on Drake. That's the rumour in the industry. Now, Ebro must have made Drake aware of this rumour. They had some sort of conversation. In that conversation, Drake replied back that he has something for Eminem too if he wants to come with it. Now, this obviously doesn't make sense for anyone that's a Drake fan because you know that he's a big fan of Eminem. But obviously, if somebody's kind of um, goading you into a response, you might just say, yeah, whatever, innit? Anyone wants it, I've got it. Cool, whatever. Then we learn in the next in the next couple of days, the next few days, that supposedly it was all a lie. We're not even sure if the first part of the conversation about what he mentioned about Joe Budden's facts, but we know for sure that the other part of the conversation about Eminem and Drake is a complete lie. Now I wanted to take a step back and analyze this from the, from the top, you know, from here, from up there. And this is hip hop scene, this is us over here. Over here in London, where I live, hence this amazing accent, <laughs> We have an issue with soccer players or football players having a real disdain for football journalists. Football players in general don't like to talk to journalists because they feel as if like, they speak to a journalist, then things they say off the record or things they say on the record can get misconstrued and put out there in order to uh, damage their character. It happens again and again and again. Giving you a favour, giving you a bit of insight because you keep giving me a bit of slack about how I acted on an interview manager, I'm going to tell you the real story, but please do not publish it. And if you do, don't credit my name. But of course, what these journalists do, they go and publish it and they attribute it to said player. Hence why there's a big divide between football players and the journalists at large. For the most part, any sort of media interview you see with a footballer and a journalist usually has to take under the guise of the club or the sponsor. So they kind of like frame the interview and make it uh, cookie cutter and really bland and there's nothing in, you don't gain any sort of insight from it. There are some publications that do get real um, insight and analysis from players, but there's a, there's a level of trust that they've kind of built over time. But for the most part, everyone's sort of like talk sport-ish standard. And talk sport, for instance, if you don't know, for anyone in America, it's quite similar to the Daily Mail. They just throw out Atlantis stuff just to, just to get people to call in. There's no real journalistic integrity there for the most part. Cool, whatever. But it seems as if this kind of attitude has permeated um, the hip hop scene. Because what I feel has happened is, what's hap is what kind of happened previously in skateboarding. When Night SB sort of like made their first run at um, conquering or taking over the skateboarding community, there was a lot of pushback 
from people thinking this big corporation is going to come in and dilute our sport. But it feels as if hip hop is at that early stage, like what skateboarding was at, where some of the old guard are really feeling threatened by what's currently going on. Especially with the stars, especially some of the biggest stars that are in the industry who are notoriously media shy. You've got the top bracket of people who consistently don't do interviews, who consistently don't do the typical media run. So in effect, these radio stations are having to rely on the B tier, C tier artists or um, even more annoying, which I think to them, is that they're having to rely on some of the young up and comers who have basically been in the game, let's say like a little yai, he's been in the game for what, seven months or so? And they're having to rely on that sort of grade of, of, of an artist in order to boost their profile. That kind of group of people, Lil Uzi Vert, are, no, are immensely big, they're immensely popular, but not at the level of Drake, not at the level of Kanye, not at the level of Jay-Z, not at the level of J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, whoever these people are, they're not at the same level. Because of that, you don't really get the same sort of coverage when you put those people online. So what you have to do, from what I've seen anyway, is that they have to create some sort of drama, some sort of um, conflict, some sort of tension in that interview in order to make it newsworthy. Case in point, the Lil Uzi Vert interview that was happened at Hot 97. Instead of it being... There was obviously parts of the interview that I absolutely love, and I have to preface this by saying that I'm a big fan of Hot 97. I'm a big fan of the dynamic that they have between the three of them, uh, Ebro, Laura Styles, and Paul Rosenberg. I think they all work com really well together and complement each other. But unfortunately, Ebro specifically has taken this stance of being the self-appointed gatekeeper of the of hip hop in general. The problem is, is that with the introduction of the internet, hip hop has become democratized. There's a level playing field. The need for gatekeepers, the need for A&Rs, the need for record labels, the need for record executives has basically diminished to maybe close to zero. Of course, they're still you still need them for a certain distribution, for a certain type of level, and if you want to mix with people like Nibelation and stuff, you probably, they have a role somewhere in it. But the reliance on having to have a record label in order to boost your career or to make you the artist that you want to be isn't there anymore. SoundCloud is your new record label. You put a tune on there, you build a fan base on there through social media, and you could also be a little receiver. OVO are a good example of it. Previously to having their show on Apple Radio, they were notorious for having one of the biggest SoundCloud accounts out there. They used to get millions and if not thousands of streams on their tunes when they used to throw them up there, especially some of the little runaways that party next door, Drake and all that sort of, sort of team used to throw up there all the time. It's a great platform to use. Now, unfortunately, because of that, I feel like people on the radio stations, especially Hot 97 and to some degree Breakfast Club, feel threatened. Their position isn't isn't as influential in the culture anymore. Before they used to break records, they don't break them anymore because things have to go into rotation. So you're not really getting a, a real flavor of what they're doing unless you're really listening super late to what Paul Rosenberg does, which is super, super amazing, but it's super late in the day. So there isn't that sort of, they don't have that influence in culture that they once had. Now, that's not to say that they don't have a role in it, but I don't agree with them appointing themselves these guardians of the industry, especially when they adopt these really weird underhand tactics. It could be, you know, attacking this young artist because he doesn't want to freestyle on a certain beat, or it could be about attacking this integrity of um, riff raff because he doesn't look like a conventional hip hop artist. That I don't really vibe with. I think what's happened now with hip hop and the great thing that what it kind of started with is that every little artist has their own little ecosystem but they all live within one world they don't all need to be big stars i'm a big fan of suicide boys i'm a big fan of bones and they're relatively small artists but they can pack out a really small arena a really small venue sir with all their major fans and their fans will buy everything they make will buy their merch will visit them will fly all over around the world to do but they're not on the level of kendrick lamar and they don't have to be everyone kind of occupies their own little place in the industry so i don't really understand why the radio personalities don't adopt that same that same perspective and look at it from a point of view of like hey i'm not as influential as i once was my place in hip-hop isn't what it once was let me reinterpret it readjust and do it to rewind it back again another point of contention that i have with this whole ebro trolling lying thing is that fundamentally if that conversation did happen with drake he effectively put a private conversation out there in a the public space. Now that has to rub people up the wrong way a little bit, especially if, especially if you're one of those artists that notoriously doesn't talk to press, party next door, the weekend, whoever they, they may be who are proper shy of press. Why would you want to talk to somebody like that or to personalities of those of that kind of ilk when you know anything you say off the record could potentially get out there? That's not really on. I'm, I'm not really a fan of that sort of thing. Now, luckily that conversation didn't happen, so 
Ebro doesn't look like that much of a scumbag, but still the uh, the the stance that it's all it was all a joke, you know, it kind of similar to like those silly prank videos that you get where they do something really abhorrent, really rude, or really annoying, and then they start shouting out that it's a prank, that it's a prank when someone gets a bit physical with them. You can't go around just telling people or just putting out news like this into the universe and not expecting sort of backlash. And when you do get the backlash, adopt this stance of like, oh, well, I don't know why you guys are making such a big deal out of it. It's just hippity hippity hop hop stuff. I think he mentioned something similar on Twitter. Dude, you're a grown man. You have no, there's no need for you to go to one of the biggest artists in the world who is a bit weird about coming on your station anyway to begin with and then to put out a private conversation which didn't actually happen and then to backtrack and say it was all a joke. That really isn't on. In general, this is all just theatre and part of the whole drama that happens in hip hop similar to WWE and I'm pretty sure there'll be a picture that will float up somewhere where Drake is hugging Ebro or something or he's on the show and he has insinuated through his kind of diss that if they fire Funk Flex that he's happy to go in it anyway so I'm, I'm assuming the problem isn't really that deep I understand the conventions of what's been set previously but new gen what, what happens with each generation is that we all interpret or reinterpret what the past has done and do it in our own way that's the point of evolution if you don't evolve you die so if you're someone from Hot 97 and you want to compete with a breakfast club who are known for their outlandish interviews, don't compete with that. Like they're, they're known for having that lane. That's their lane. What are you going to get from there? But you'd hope that a station like Hot 97, which claims to be the home of hip hop, is predominantly occupied a lane of, hey, we're all about the music. You come on here and we ask you about the music. It's all about the art. It's all about the culture. That's what it's about. And why don't you occupy that lane? Because that other lane is super crowded. No one really wants to hear someone of Ebro stature who's been in the game for that long and is of that age and has a, a really successful show happening now on Beats One. You don't want to hear that sort of mess coming from him. You want to hear like really introspective, really detailed, knowledgeable questions about the music, about the culture and about the impact that this certain artist is having on the current generation. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear him throwing out random fake or real made up stories about one of the popular artists in the world because unfortunately, like all popular artists are, they have the worst kind of fans. So now the Drake fans are absolutely ripping him online and they and and they and if anything they probably justify the reason why he wanted to put that out there because Drake fans are notoriously Stanish and so are Eminem fans so like he, if he could pick the but the, the two best people to get some sort of social coverage or media coverage on he picked them Eminem fans are notoriously staunch in the defense of of Eminem and so are Drake fans like you can't say a bad word of, about them to these fans we know that and somehow Ebro decided that was a good idea to come in, interject in there and make up this story. And now it's fake. And now it just, it's just left a bad vibe in it. Because I know for me personally, if I was a future, if I was a party next door, if I was a Bryson Tiller, even though he's had an interview with 107, all these other people that are notoriously media shy, I would have been a little bit remiss to kind of go on those kind of shows. For what? You know, like, what for? What's that going to get you? You know who your fans are. You know, you have your 1,000 true fans. You know that if you put the work out there and you really commit to the craft and you perfect your sound, you evolve it and you consistently put out quality material, that your fans are going to ride with you regardless. You don't need these radio stations to do anything for you. Unfortunately, the more these antics happen, the more of their influence will diminish, especially when you appoint yourself the self-appointed guardian of some sort of area that no one's appointed to. It's, it's sort of similar to like, I live in this apartment block and we have these people called like um, the apartment guardians who kind of like supervise and bring up grievances about what's happening in the apartment for door breaks or whatever, whatever. But there's some people in this building who are a little bit too excited about their power and take it way too personally. Dude, you don't own the land, you rent the place here, you don't even own it, like, Take a, take a chill pill. Same like Ebro. You're invested in the culture. I understand you've got a big place in it, but you need to take a little bit of a back seat and recalibrate exactly what your role is. And I think your role is to be the bastion of all that knowledge that you've gained over all those years, working at one of the biggest stations in the world. When it comes to hip hop, take that and kind of like pass that knowledge down to the young ones. Don't hold them to some little fake um, weird barometer or make them jump through these imaginary hoops that for the most part, the general public and even the hip hop community as it is now doesn't really care about. They care about the artistry, they care about connecting with somebody that's real, that's what they care about. They don't care about these preconceived hip hop standards. So the internet is democratizing the industry, the internet is flattening the playing field, but unfortunately your demise comes from yourself. self sabotage is the quickest way to get out of this industry. I can see it and it's happening and I just want to tell those guys just take a chill pill. 
Now, I hope these glasses work, didn't they? I'm pretty sure they did. And I'll see you on the other side.